ASP.NET and VC relies on ASP.NET itself to help prevent malicious HTML from arriving at your server. However, when you need HTML to be posted to your server, you can disable this feature, but you need to be careful. One way to disable the request validation is to use an attribute validate input and pass it a Boolean parameter with a value of false. The one problem with this approach is that it is all or nothing. We're either validating all of the input to see if it contains HTML or we're not validating any of the input to see if it contains HTML. Typically, when you want to receive HTML, you want to receive it for a specific field or a specific property, and that's what a new feature in ASP.NET MVC3 will let you do. You can decorate a view model property with the allow HTML attribute, and ASP.NET MVC will allow HTML to pass through. Here's an example of an instructor class that has the allow HTML attribute on the description. This will allow HTML to pass through and be posted to the server and put into that property, but you still need to be careful as I'm about to demonstrate. Let's start by using an instructor class that does not have that attribute on the description property. We're just going to have the name and description properties unadorned. We'll also have an edit scenario set up. So inside of the home controller, if someone requests slash home slash edit, I'm just going to new up an instructor that they can edit. Then they can post that instructor back here. We just want to see if we can get the request through. All we need now is the view. So let me go to the home folder, say add a new view. It's going to be the edit view in Razor, strongly typed to an instructor. Let's go ahead and scaffold it to produce an edit template and click add. This will give me everything I need to edit that instructor. I'll go ahead and run the application and let's give this a try. And we'll go to slash home slash edit. And I'll say instructor's name is Scott. And the description is wow with an emphasis. Try to save that. And this is the request validation. It detected a potentially dangerous request.form value basically because it saw HTML markup in the post. With MVC2, the only way to allow this input to pass would be to use that validate attribute that I talked about earlier. You can do this by placing validate input false on the controller action that receives the post. So let's add the attribute, build the project. I'm going to refresh the page to resubmit that post. And now the post will go through successfully. But as I said earlier, now we're letting HTML through everywhere. The user can pass HTML inside of any field. So let's get rid of that attribute. But before we do, I'm just going to demonstrate that I can pass HTML in both fields and we can still post to the server. Not exactly what we want. So let's come back, remove validate input as false. Instead, let's go to the instructor and allow HTML just for the description property. Do a quick build, try to post to the server, and we get the exception. It found HTML in the name field. So what we should be able to do though, is be a good user and not submit HTML in the name field. Just submit it in the description and that will post just fine. So allow HTML on the description property. That's the only property in this post that's allowed to receive HTML. Is what we've done potentially dangerous? Why well, yes it is. You always have to be careful when you allow a user to give you HTML to display. Particularly if you take that HTML and display it back out unencoded. Let's open up the edit view, get rid of the link that goes back to the list, and instead use html.raw to output the model.description unencoded. I'll save that view, come back in, out to the browser, and now I'll say that Scott's description is actually script type equals text slash JavaScript alert XXS. That's my description. I'm going to save that. And I've just added JavaScript into someone's database that will pop up an alert box, but it could be much worse. I could be adding that JavaScript 
and having you save it and display it to some other user, now my JavaScript can look through the cookies that that user has and try to, to do something malicious. So you have to be very careful with what you're receiving as input here and try to scrub things as well as possible, particularly if you're going to take that string and just write it back out as HTML to the browser.